Now you might think that it's a requirement to have a 4K capture card along with a DSLR with 4K output and clean HDMI out to be able to get a good image whether you are streaming or on a conference call on your computer. That is until now. This is the Lumina webcam that promises to change that with artificial intelligence like no other webcam has ever offered before. Does it live up to the hype? Well, let's find out. But before we do, this video is sponsored by you. By slapping that like button, you're sponsoring this video. Now let's get started. Let's crack it open. So look your best on every call. Vibrant colors with automatic color calibration, realistic background blur with AI depth sensing, automatic picture framing with an AI cameraman. It's a 4K AI camera with the world's first AI powered webcam. Lumina helps you feel like you're right there in person. Hashtag shot on Lumina. There's the front of the box. Interesting. I guess that's a pull tab and not a security tab. Yep, as a pull tab. Nothing else in the box. We have the webcam. It's a nice, like, aluminum construction. Oh, that's cool. Just the money on this webcam alone. I've seen some pretty expensive ones on Amazon like this. That, uh, it's pretty crazy. Like, that's included. That's freaking awesome. That's for color calibration. Okay, we've got the manual. Super simple. Just plug it in. Do you want me to open the big or the little box first? Let's do the little one. All right, so it looks like that is the stand for it. is in the big box. Well, here's an Allen wrench and some cables. I'm guessing USB-C to USB-C and a standard USB. Nope, I was wrong. They're both USB-C to USB-C. Interesting. Now that's everything in the box, so let's hook it up and see how it works. Now real quick, I missed something in the small box here earlier. I wanna show you, it is a, I guess it's a magnetic privacy cover. And also I use the Allen wrench to tighten on the bottom of uh, the webcam here. So there we go. And then so you don't lose it, you can take it and reverse it. There you go, like that. Yep, so it's got to be like that for storage. Interesting. Oh, it's the polarity of the magnets, see? All right.
right, so let's get this set up. For the viewers out there, I've got a surprise about this. What does oh. this pull up? <laughs> oh, um, oh, okay, okay. Are you gonna show, the, is it gonna be like a reveal later or something? Yeah, it, yeah. We designed the Lumina, like there were some trade-offs to make the, um, uh, I guess, performance like uh, fast enough and small enough to fit on most consumer GPUs. Um, but like we've, we've never had to test it on a 1080 or a 1070. Those are like pretty beefy gaming GPUs. Um, but like most of the integrated GPUs inside MacBooks, even back to like 2016 models are perfectly fine for, for the, what, what you have on my end, at least like the cameraman part, as well as the, the virtual bouquet behind me. Okay. So that's actually being offloaded to the GPU on the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So any MacBook right now, or many like uh, uh, even PC computers, they have like an integrated GPU in them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and those alone, even without the discrete one, like sometimes they'll add like an NVIDIA or an AMD into the laptop. Um, but I think if you're on the M1, you just have one big integrated GPU on your M1 chip. I think that, that should be perfectly fine for handling and we little bit of throws at it. Now, do you know with the driver for this, was that designed to run on ARM architecture on the M1? Or is it x86 ah. and then it's going to be going through a translation layer through Rosetta 2? Uh, so we originally tried it on Rosetta. Performance was horrible. So we actually did the full port over to run for ARM. Yes. Um, so performance should be really good right now. <laughs> I know it, awesome. was, it was really bad. It was like, oh my god, like we can't, we can't release this. This is horrible. Yeah. Do, do you have an M1? Um, we do have one for testing, but okay. we have an eight gig one, so it's not as. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you have the sixteen gig yeah, one. Yeah. You know, like previously when you, you you'd like have all these tabs open, and you're like, oh, I need like sixteen gigs of RAM in order yeah. to do like my normal day to day stuff. Um, we haven't had any issues with the eight gig um, one. This came with two USB C to USB C cables. Why? Yeah. <laughs> um, we wanted to be friendly for people that were on the go with like laptops. Um, so you don't have like this lengthy cable you need to like wrap around and stuff. Uh, as well as people who have workstations, like big monitors that are far away from where they put their laptop or dock. Um, I got some feedback on that one. So I think we might change that up in the future. What about this? this card here is this actually used for calibration or is it just something that is cool that you put in the package <laughs> well uh, it can be used for calibration uh, and since we've currently shipped like maybe 500 or so units of the Lumina um, we found that it can be rather finicky to lighting in the local environment since a lot of times like you know your room um wherever you are for work at the office the lighting is very different from kind of what we have in our office for testing yeah um we've gotten like wildly different results for it so there's going to be an ongoing process of improving it um but for the time being our goal is to just like hey whoever has the lumina um if they uh install the software with what it has they can get to something that looks really good um, so currently I'm recommending like, hey, if you want to try it out and you think your lighting's decent, like you have something lighting in front of you, there's not a ton of backlighting, um, then it sometimes works pretty well. Um, but if it doesn't work well, just restart it and then go with the, uh, the, the control panel for kind of adjusting it. But from what I was reading, I should be downloading the latest firmware and updating the, to the latest firmware first. Is that right? The camera itself doesn't need a driver. Um, the software that you're downloading actually is where we add like the AI effects, kind of like the cameraman and the background blur. Um, that application also has a little utility built in to make it really easy to reflash the firmware. Um, so I would recommend downloading the software, making sure that works, uh, and then going to the, the uh, updater utility to kind of update the firmware in that, in that order. Okay. All right, so yeah, Lumina setup. All right, scrolling down, TLDR, here we go, M1 Mac. Uh, that's the app. It is uh, unfortunately a Google Drive link right now. Yeah, There's a really funny ask. story about that, why that is. That's awesome that you did this for uh, M1, man. I appreciate that. And I'm sure well, a lot I mean, of other people did too. So, and I thought you also have it for uh, x86 as well, right? For Mac? Yep, yep. We actually started on x86, but once the M1s were just obviously very powerful, very you know popular, we decided to. Oh, uh, it's requiring that I leave the meeting. <laughs> ah, right. Because um, I, I would recommend following it because it requires Zoom to restart to pick up some of the drivers that we install.
There we go. So I am back. So this nice. is the Lumina. All right. Okay, how to config the app. Take five seconds to check your lights. Press and hold card close. Oh, to the I would face. skip this. I would totally skip this. Okay. Um, from how it looks right now, I'm pretty sure it'll mess up. Uh, the, I think there's like a strong light in front of you. Yeah, yeah, I got a, a ring light up. Okay, okay. There we go. Actually, if you have a ring light, you won't even need to do it. The camera should be able to do it on its own without the card. You're on your Zoom right now. Can you change the camera? I think uh, you're probably set to the raw camera currently. Yeah. Oh, here we go. There's a little yeah, raw carrot there. And there we go. And plus. Yeah, I would switch over to the plus. Okay, I just did that. Great. Now, um, now try like cranking up the blur all the way and clicking the little blur icon. Okay. All right, cool. So we know it's working right now, um, but this is obviously not how you want to look. Um, this looks like, you know, a really fake zoom blur. Um, so let, let's try to, let, maybe we'll, we'll treat this as like a first step and let's try to like improve on it a little bit. Um, would you mind turning blur down to maybe like middle way, maybe even a little less, so it's a little more natural. Um, and actually, Brad, later on, if you turn on your, uh, your Sony a6500, you kind of have a frame of reference um, and then you can almost mimic. Yeah, if you go into settings, there should be five tabs. I would just go to the updates tab. Nice, okay. Yeah, I can't download it while it's in use, but yeah, that's that's fine. Do you want to share the uh, the story as to uh, why uh, Google Drive ended up having to be used for downloading? So if you go to the setup page, you probably notice it looks like a um, like a Notion uh, page. We spent all of our time building the product. We didn't spend any time basically building the setup page. So we originally used Notion to host it. And um, Notion pushed out an update literally the day that we released the Mac installer. Mm -hmm. And that update meant that Notion pages no longer did um, direct file downloads from their page. So you actually have to link somebody to a different site in order for the file download to work. Uh, we have all these other product related things that we want to focus on. So we decided to just put it on Google Drive for the time being and focus on the, the app, the Why camera, and the software. Get just buy an S3 bucket and just toss it in there. It was on an S3 bucket. So Notion's pages cannot link directly to an S3 page for downloading the file. Actually, <laughs> I'm really excited that you just got the Lumina. Um, if you have any issues, like uh, I basically, I want to be able to make it look identical to your Sony um, through like some That's of the sliders right. and some of the filters. I think we should find another time to do this again. Uh, once you get the software set up and firmware updated, yeah. um, I think another 10 minutes, we can probably get pretty close to the Sony. For the viewers out there, I've got a surprise about this. What does oh. this pull up? <laughs> oh, um, oh, okay, okay. Any idea what it pulls up? Um, I think it's just the model for the card because we, we have different versions of the so card out. It's LC01, which comes up as Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> it does? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, why does it go as you? Wait, is this like in, in Google? Yeah, so here, I'll show you here. It's, uh, and that's what comes up right there, man. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, that's interesting. I get a bunch of golfing gloves or like biking gloves, too. Well, this just um, shows up as LC01, so. So here is footage using the virtual camera driver of the Lumina camera, and it is currently set to 1080p. And I'm going to walk through some of the settings real quick on the camera and adjust them on the fly so you can actually see what kind of improvement that it makes to the video itself. So right now I have blur at 25% for the background blur, and I'll move it here to 50%. Here is 75%, and here is 100%. Now currently with this beta firmware, you can only adjust it in 25% increments for the blur. I'm gonna take it down to 25%. Now the cameraman, when I slide that back and forth, it changes how aggressive it is on uh, following me around. 